What I have in my hands is a bottle of 2002 Classic Vintage Brut about to finish its production. The yeast that you see, this accumulation at the bottom of the bottle here, is the yeast that actually conducted the fermentation that produced those wonderfully small bubbles that you see in classically produced sparkling wines. What we're going to do now is remove the yeast from the bottle without taking the wine out, which, a, which is a bit of a magician's trick. It took about five minutes in this refrigerated solution here to freeze the neck of the bottle. In doing so, we've trapped the yeast plug up here. And then we're going to release the cap, which will blow in a ex small explosion those yeast out of the bottle. We're now left with a perfectly clean bottle of wine with no yeast residue down here. Jose Luis has already disgorged the wine. He's put the bottles on this pedestal right here, which will add some dosage or that liqueur to the wine to reach that balance point. After that, we need to close the wine to hold in that carbon dioxide, those bubbles, those wonderful bubbles. That's what Maria is doing here. She's inserting a champagne cork into every one of the bottles and then wiring it down in place with a wire hood. Now Cruz is going to inspect the bottles, checking for any residual yeast that might have gotten away, and to make sure that every bottle, every bottle got a little bit of that dosage that we want. And then he's going to mix it in and get some of that good upper body exercise that we like here at Iron Horse. And now I'm going to go ahead and taste this one. Mm. Beautifully crisp. The difference between this and a glass of French champagne or sparkling wine would be the varietal intensity. Here in California with our gorgeous sunshine and our warm days, we reach a level of maturity that they can never reach in France. Our wines are more expressive, more fruit driven than those in Champagne.